Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at an older hardcover that's out of print now, but you can still get the material elsewhere so I wanted to cover it, and that is the House of X Powers of X oversized hardcover. So without further ado, let's take a look at this book. Here is the cover of the book, and here is the spine of the book, and then here is the back of the book which says, While you slept, the world changed. All right, let's first go over the contents of this book, which is just quite simply House of X 1 through 6 and Powers of X 1 through 6. So for those who don't know, what is this? Well, this is a modern X-Men masterpiece that revitalized the X-Men genre by pivoting them in this bold, new, radical direction. And the ripple effect that this story has on just the entire line is also incredible. It's just a total status quo shift that I found deeply fascinating. And it's really cool because there are good parts to the new society and cultures that they're cultivating in this book, and there are also imperfect, shadowy parts too that some may or may not be illuminated on in further stories, but basically it's an era that asks a lot of challenging questions and also explores a lot of greater themes in a really interesting way. And I mean, this is Hickman stuff too, so you know just three things with that. One, it's going to be massive in scope, which this is definitely. Two, it's going to be an amazing read. I mean, Hickman doesn't really miss. And three, it's going to have a ton of charts and graphs and whatnot, which I'm sure you'll notice as I'm flipping through, but they're actually pretty fun, and I prefer the way Hickman utilizes them over some other writers. This is also the ideal starting point for readers who are interested in getting into the Krakoa era of X-Men, since this book showcases the whole Krakoa process from concept to execution to them celebrating on their newly founded nation. So basically, two huge and essential things are added to the X-Men lore here. And that is one, as I mentioned, they found the nation of Krakoa and they actually create a civilization there and they start, like I said, cultivating their own culture with it. They have their own language and everything. They sort of use some leverage to get their seat at the table and get recognized as an actual diplomatic nation. And then the other big thing is that they have created a mutant circuit that is five mutants, who they call the five, who with those combined abilities can resurrect other mutants. So they basically solve the problem of death. And so this era leads to a lot of fun characters coming back who haven't been around for years, decades even. I also appreciate it because it solves a bit of a storytelling problem in comics, which is that sometimes writers can rely on the death of a certain character or something like that to sell comics, to move books, and this kind of eliminates that. This says, hey, they can just be resurrected, so you have to focus your story on something else. You have to think bigger, you have to think deeper, you have to think different from what we've had in the past. And actually further down the line, some writers use that really well, some don't. But in this book, the actual big resurrection scene in here is very, very powerful and it was very moving the first time I read it. I mean, really everything in here is pretty great and pretty powerful. Like I said, it's 12 issues written by Jonathan Hickman. So he really understood what was needed in this franchise right now, I think. And just because this is a massive idea that he put to paper doesn't mean that we miss out on the character moments either. I think he handles those really well, and in particular, I really, really enjoyed the stuff with Magneto, and I enjoyed the stuff with Emma a lot too. But I think pretty much everyone's favorite, if you have a favorite who is A or B list maybe, has some time to shine in here. Oh, you know what? Something else monumental worth mentioning that is important and introduced in here is is the retcon of Moira in the issue that features the many lives of Moira McTaggart, which is basically a storyline that shows us how she has actually been a mutant all along, and if you haven't read it yet, I will let you discover sort of what her mutant ability is, because it is incredibly powerful, overpowered, and absolutely insane, and it's really fun the way they use it. Something else pretty cool that we get is a unified mutant front, and that is when they establish their governing body and they establish their nation. They bring in people they've fought with in the past, so one of the bigger moments is, you know, Apocalypse and Xavier shaking hands, that's kind of iconic imagery. Sinister is a part of this too. Mystique is a part of this. Sabretooth is in here and uh, he has a little arc that goes on too that's fun to read and leads into something else. And you know, everyone's got their little schemes going on, so it's kind of like this power balance thing, House of Cards style display when we actually get moments within the Quiet Council, which is that governing body. And you know, the other big component of the conflict in this book deals with this mother mold sentinel that's like orbiting the sun and they're trying to stop it from creating these really gnarly futuristic sentinels that 
you know, have the ability to wipe out mutants permanently. And it gets pretty high sci-fi there, uh, but overall, this is just such a super innovative book, and what an amazing story, too. Perfect for new readers if you have maybe some slight familiarity with the character, um, but really, really fascinating and enriching for people who have read X-Men through the Claremont years. It's very clear that the writers love those Claremont stories because they build on it a lot here, too. They do callbacks all the time. Wonderful artwork in here, too. Pepe Larraz is incredible, and the colors in here pop so much as well. It's just an awesome interdisciplinary effort that went into making this instant classic. So I'm sure many of you have read this already, so if you have, I would love to hear what your thoughts on it are, what your thoughts on the Krakoa era in general are, and if you haven't read this and you're interested in picking that up, you should definitely drop a comment below too, because you are at the precipice of an amazing journey into the world of X. Just look at Krakoa, look at what they made, look at that beautiful celebration. This is such a fun time to be an X-Men fan. Guys, you gotta jump on board. There's also some nice extras in the back here of alternate covers. There's a lot of Scotty Young ones. I know people love him, so those are there at your discretion to flip through as well. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and you all have a great rest of your day.